Well, the hardest thing is done, so now it should go a little, I'm hoping better. What is up my machine freaks? I hope you guys are feeling froggy fresh and fresh to death. Today isn't a manic Monday, today is a terrific Tuesday, so we're uploading. It's time for a 3D Machines production. You guys know the plan, we gotta make this thing awesome. Now it was extremely challenging with that engine. In the last 3D Machines production, I asked how many horsepower this was. I got a comment, and I do believe that comment said nine horsepower. This is a single cylinder engine. From there, we moved on to a opposing twin engine. So we doubled the amount of cylinders and the amount of horsepower because we got 18 on this one. But this guy here, this guy is a whole new animal. happy to say that I have my seat back. This is the order that we blew these things up. Well, not this one yet. What the hell's smoking? Um. I honestly hope it doesn't come down to that because that's a really nice and big engine. I haven't looked at these belts yet, but I'm picking them up for the first time ever together and I can already tell there's a huge difference. All right, so this is the one that came out of the Gator. It's a little bit more flimsy, probably more worn out because this is six years older, the machine is at least. This one is a lot more durable. And if you look at them, the Articat belt is taller. I'm asking the same question right now, will it matter? It currently appears that we're gonna have to start cutting this thing up. Kinda wanted the engine to fit in there a little easier, but if we gotta cut it up, we gotta cut it up. Stuff, so we have more room for activities, more room for engine activities. And when you have to make room for a bigger engine, doesn't that make you all fuzzy inside? Yeah, 3D, I feel all fuzzy inside. So this may just come as an assumption, but the engine is going to go right some, well, it had to go somewhere here. Now, I originally wanted to put it, you know, flat. However, if we did that, then any kind of air filter system that we could come up with would get in the way of our gearbox. So that's no go because we need air filtration. Otherwise, we're gonna be going through rings and pistons like crazy because it's a two joker. And then I was thinking, well, what if I just put the engine right on top of here and then we can use the same belt? Dalton, I like where you're going with that. You're gonna have a nice exposed engine. You're gonna be able to show off, yes. However, then we'd be losing box space. So I figured if we raise the engine and meet somewhere in the middle here, which is right here, then we could use the belt, we could have our filtration system, and hide the exhaust a little better. So it's gonna go somewhere around there. Two of the mounts are done. 
the engine originally had four mounts. I have the two passenger side mounts completed. So with those two being done, well tacked up, what it'll allow me to do is to move this engine up and down a little bit, side to side a little bit, and dial it right in. But before I do that, I have to level the, the frame so that then I can level the engine. Because if we want consistent belt wear, which we do, then we have to level stuff and make sure things are in a line, because if not, the things get kittywampus. We don't want that. We want this belt to wear out nice and even. When we're ripping those trails off. It's not perfect just like me, but we'll just compensate the engine on that same bubble level thing. See, that's out of whack. So we're 75% there. Three of the engine mounts are on. Now when you're building a, a redneck machine, I guess you could call it, or as I would like to call it, a classy country contraption, it, in my opinion, is harder to mount an engine in something like this than a car or a truck. A car, truck, or SUV has an engine and a transmission, and then all you have to do is worry about where the tail end of the transmission is going to hook up to the rear end. You have universal joints, and things can be all out of sorts. Here we have a belt and an engine that is not supposed to go into this thing at all. Plus, with an engine and transmission, you have something this long compared to a clutch, which is this big on this thing. The engine is in its final position. All four of the mounts are on it. Now we just have to weld them up completely. A lot of you guys don't live up north and probably never see snowmobiles, but how a snowmobile cools down is if it's not air cooled, it's liquid cooled, of course. And what happens is you have these radiators. Those two silver things that run under the track and just basically get hit with snow. Then the snow cools down the coolant, which cools down the engine. We currently don't have snow in New York, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to develop some sort of radiator for this thing. One of the things that come to mind with me is the fact that when you were in school, you had to do that mile for some stupid reason. And of course it was on the hottest days. The only way you were cooling down is when the wind was hitting you and cooling your body down. That's how these air-cooled engines work. They work, but not as good as a liquid-cooled. Now imagine putting on some sophisticated sweatshirt that had some sort of like liquid running through it, nice cool liquid to cool you down. It'd be much more pleasurable. You might even get a little bit more horsepower out of you. Well, that's what happens with this guy. So since we have this huge sail in the front of that engine, it's never going to cool it down. It's never going to cool down an air-cooled engine during the summer. So we have to put a radiator somewhere on this thing so that wind can get to the radiator, the coolant can go through the nice cool radiator, come back to the engine, and cool our engine down. If this thing strictly only saw snow, then it might have a running chance with only being air cooled. But come on, the most braptastic time is the summer. Go down! So that's why we went with this guy. So the heart, the engine of this build is installed. The next things are like the brains of the operation, the fuel injecting system. This stuff. We don't really have to continue the similes between this thing and the human body. This thing was way more challenging than I thought it was going to be. There were times when I didn't think it was going to work at all. But it's in. I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. Until next time, leave some comments in the comment section below so I can answer them in the next video. Next Tuesday at 8 p.m., the next 3D Machines production will go live. The most difficult thing is done. Hopefully things start falling into place. With progression comes a parts list, so I gotta start ordering some stuff. Stay froggy fresh, stay super fly. Until the next 3D Machines production, 3D Machines out.